Every year in Australia, someone breaks down in the great Australian outback. Every year. A lot of the time, with tragic consequences. Sometimes, those people just never get back home. And it's unnecessary, by and large. This little series we're going on at the moment is about how to turn your motor vehicle, whether it's a four-wheel drive, kitted out with the latest and greatest stuff, or it's just a family's runabout. People go off the beaten track in all manner of vehicles. So it's important you understand what things you can do when that vehicle breaks down, or gets stuck, or is otherwise disabled, and not able to get you back home to safety, what your options are in terms of being able to use that vehicle in a different way. And this is the key concept I want to get across to you right at this point. That vehicle ceases to become a vehicle and straight away becomes something else. And that something else is one great big survival resource. Now the first thing I want you to think about doing with this is shifting your preciousness of the vehicle. Now that vehicle's got five tires on it, sometimes six, depending on how well configured it is for off-road travel at least five tires. And if you're really a bit cautious about this process, you can at least use the spare tire. And what we're gonna do in this video is show you how to light a tire signal fire. Okay, so we're gonna use your vehicle tires to call for help. Now we do this only when we start to become aware of search activity in our vicinity. That's really important. Don't just light them willy-nilly. Light them when you hear search aircraft hovering around the area, clearly looking for you. Hopefully you've done a whole stack of other things beforehand and you know there's a search happening and that it's focused on your welfare. But just in case, make sure you're aware that the aircraft are gonna be looking down at the Australian landscape and seeing a whole stack of wildfire smoke. And it's all white and gray. And that's just the way it is in the Australian bush. It's always on fire. So if you suddenly light another light, white and gray fire, it's just one more fire in a complex array of fires on offer that the crews need to search thoroughly for each one. A tire fire is different. It burns black. I'm gonna see that in just a minute, okay? But lighting that fire is not as easy as a lot of people will tell you it is. I've done it a few times, and it can take a bit of effort. So I'm gonna show you the fastest way I've been able to figure out to date to get a fire lit on that tire and to do it quickly. All right, so we're gonna do that by first taking the wheel, if it's on the vehicle, off the vehicle. Secondly, if it's a spare wheel, get it out, and we're gonna deflate it. We don't want that thing going bang once we start to burn it. All right, we're gonna have it in a nice clear area so that it can be clearly part of our entire footprint on the ground. And it's a clear statement. I would like some assistance here, please. All right? Very, very important basic concepts to start with. All right, so let's go and have a look at the tire itself and what's going to be happening with that. So this is the process. This is our tire fire. Now, this is not the one of my car. All right, so hold your comments on that space. This is one that I've got lying around the farm that I want to use as a demonstration because I'm actually going to light this one up. It's important. You see the thing actually burning. Otherwise, it's just another expert telling you this is the right way of doing it without you actually seeing that it works. So this is one from the farm, and we're gonna light this one up. Now, it's already deflated, okay? It's already had the air let out of it, and if I wasn't sure about that, just in case you know nothing about vehicles, we just take out that thing there, the valve, and either remove it completely or deflate it fully. And that one's stuck because it's so bloody old. Alright, there it comes. Alright, so we can pull that valve straight out of there and that gets our, our, our tire nice and flat so it doesn't explode when I'm down here. It's only going to then spin around and potentially throw my fire in an uncontrolled way around the area. And I'm already in a situation if I'm doing this. So why would I make it worse? Alright, so the key thing is tire's flat, area's clear. Yeah? Now this B around here is what we're going to utilize. This is the best thing I can come up with after years of thinking about this problem in terms of how to light this thing fast. Now what I'm going to do is the vehicle is full of accelerants. Um, this particular vehicle I'm driving today is a petrol vehicle. So I'm going to 
punch a hole in the fuel tank, I'm going to rip open a, a fuel line, I'm going to milk a bit of fuel out of Carby. Somehow, I'm going to get some fuel in a container and have it on standby. All right? Now, when I hear the aircraft overhead or approaching or moving around the area around me, I'm simply going to draw attention to them visually by lighting this thick black smoke. And to do that, I'm going to pour that petrol around the rim here so it sits in the rim. I'll lose a little bit down the, down the sides there. And then I'm going to simply throw a spark into that. I can do that with a fire brand. I can have a fire going nearby, which I can add to this. Or I can just use a fire steel or a cigarette lighter. Or I can short out the battery. There's a whole stack of different ways we can light the fire. That's not important. What's important is understanding that this needs an accelerant to get this rubber to start to burn. Otherwise, I can spend a lot of time with my opportunity for getting a, a lift home being missed while I'm trying desperately to get this thing to burn. All right, so let's see how we go with that bit. 